The first one we'll see, the first crown in the Bible is the crown of glory. The crown of glory. And we read about that in 1 Peter 5 here. It says, The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So we see here the crown of glory. Now you might be asking now, is, it, is this crown of glory, is this something that is only for um, bishops? Because it's talking about here, about bishops feeding the flock of God and being a good example, and then they shall receive a crown of glory. I don't think it is only for the bishops, but I think bishops can earn this crown because one of their primary, primary roles is to be a good example. Now, how do we earn this crown? I think this crown is earned by uh, your testimony, by being a good example. We see there in um, verse 3, neither as being lord, lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. Now, that's something that we can all do, right? That's not just something that I can do. That's something that we can all do. We can all be a good example to other people, whether it's believer or unbeliever. Um, Let's look at a couple of other verses where we see the crown of glory. Proverbs 4. I just want you to see this consistency uh, of this crown and talking about the, the example that you set. Proverbs 4. Hear ye children the instruction of a father and tend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was, I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother, he taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forsake it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. So you can see here it's talking about the wisdom, the law, keeping God's commandments. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her and she shall keep thee. Talking about wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honour when thou dost embrace her. Look at this. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. So we see here again the crown of glory linked in to keeping the commandments and having that, that good testimony. Um, let's go to Proverbs 12, verse 3. Look at this, a man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. And uh, verse 4 in particular, a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. So we see here that a virtuous woman, I mean, what, what makes a woman virtuous, right? It's her works, it's a good testimony. We read in Proverbs 31, and we read about the virtuous woman. It's not just a woman that's beautiful, right? I mean, we read in Proverbs 31 that favor is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. So this virtuous woman is, is a woman, is, is how she lives. It's her righteous living, her testimony. And a virtuous woman, it says here, is a crown to her husband. I think there's a link there with this crown of glory and this good example of a woman being a crown to her husband. And a point that I just want to make here is, if you are a, a virtuous woman, if you are a good wife, you'll make your husband look good. You know, that's why it's saying a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. How many times you see women, they think they're so spiritual, they think they're so, they're, they're so mature in the faith, but they make their husband look like an idiot. They belittle their husband. You know, everyone, when, 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 they, when they ask, uh, you know, the way the wife talks about her husband, they would... would when you talk about your husband, do people think more of your husband or do they think less of your husband? Because they ought to think more of your husband. Your husband ought to look like more of a man the more virtuous of a woman you are, right? Because you ought to be a crown to your husband. And it's funny because it, it, this really does happen. That if a woman is spiritual and she's doing the right thing, she reverences her husband, she submits to her husband, she'll make her husband look more of a man than, she, than he really is. 
And I'll give you an example just from my own life. I, I know my, like my wife, like people think I'm a lot more domineering and I'm a lot more like probably strong willed than I really am. It's just that my, my wife is a godly wife that she makes me seem that way to other people. And I remember, um, you know, even at work, when you know like my wife you know makes meals for me and i bring like home cooked meals to work and you know the guys at work are always like oh man you know like you really have your house in order sort of thing and it's and and, and it and it just reminds me of this verse because it, it's not all me you know it's, it's not that i'm just this manly man and you, you guys you guys that know me that know me well i'm not really that macho type of a man but um but if your wife is a godly virtuous woman she'll make you seem more of a man than you really are you know she'll she'll be that crown um to her husband so we see there that that good example being linked into that crown let's uh look at another uh crown of 16. and these are all familiar verses but i just don't know if you've uh like sort of linked these together the way that that um that i've seen them uh, proverbs 16 31 the hoary head is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. So it's saying here that the, white, the hoary head, the white head of an old person um, is a crown of glory if, it, if it's found in the way of righteousness. So it's not a crown of glory if it's found in the way of unrighteousness. So if an old person is a bad example, a bad testimony, the white hair is not a crown of glory. But if they have a white head, the hoary head, and it is found in the way of righteousness, it is a crown of glory to that person because they have that testimony. Uh, let's go to Isaiah 62. <coughs> you just see a crown of glory again. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles sh shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. So you see here, he's saying that other nations will see the righteousness um, of, uh, and the Gentiles in verse 2, shall see thy righteousness. So that example, that testimony, and then they, he's saying that, Israel or you know Jerusalem will be this crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. So again, this crown of glory, glo uh, glory being linked uh, with being a good example. Now let's go to Matthew 12. So something for you to consider. You know, if you want this crown of glory, if you want to earn this crown of glory for the Lord, is how are your actions or your inactions affecting others? What's your testimony like? What's your example like? You know, are you setting a good example? Or are you setting a bad example? Um, look at this verse in Matthew 12, verse 30. It says, He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth, scattereth abroad. And one thing that's uh, very important to know about how you live your life is that there's no middle ground. Everything you do is either gathering for the Lord or scattering. Because some people just think, you know what, I just want to live the Christian life and I just want to coast through, I just want to be neutral. There is no neutral ground when it comes to Christianity. If you're, if you're doing nothing, you're scattering. Otherwise, you need to be gathering uh, with the Lord. And you know, we all have a bit of gathering and a bit of scattering in our life. We're not always all gathering. But it's just for something to you, for you to reflect on. It's good for some personal reflection. Is What is my life doing? Am I, am I, is my life a life that gathers for the Lord or is my life a life that scatters for the Lord? There is no middle ground. Look at this verse in uh, Luke 13. <clears throat> I'm always reminded when um, I think of our example and how our example affects other people, I'm always reminded of this parable in Luke 13. Uh, he spake also this parable, A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto them, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig it about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after, then after that thou shalt cut it down. 
So we see this parable of this, this fig tree and the husband, you know, the, somebody comes to it and, and tries to find fruit on it and there's no fruit on this fig tree. But the thing I want to point out about this fig tree is look in verse 7. He says, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. And look at this. Why cumbereth it the ground? So you see how this fruitless fig tree, it's not just neutral. It's actually drawing nutrients from the soil. I mean, you think about it, it's taking up space. It's taking sun that could be otherwise given to the, to, the, to the trees or the plants underneath it. And this is why God wants to get rid of it. Because it actually does draw resources. And it's the same like that. It's the same in a church. Because you know the church is the pillar and ground of the truth. The church is like a soil. And we're all like these plants planted in this soil. And if you're a plant that doesn't have any fruit, you're not a good testimony. You know, you're not reading your Bible and praying. You're not going soul winning. It's not a neutral position to be in. Because you're actually drawing resources. And not, you know, obviously there's the physical resources. I'm not worried about the physical resources. I'm thinking about more the spiritual resources. Just you know, the, the, the spiritual drain that you may take from other people by not getting involved in the work. And you know, I know we're all at different points in time. You guys know who you are. Not, not I'm trying to be hard on you if you don't go soul winning. But I just want to encourage you um, to, to get involved and just provoke you onto love and good works. And I just wanted you to see here that Look in verse 7, he says, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree. So there is this patience that's involved. So I'm not like, you know, I understand that we we're all at different points in times. We all have that fear. And we've talked about it. I've talked about it with all you guys before. But, uh, you know, we're all at different points in our spiritual life. But it's up to us who are more spiritual to be patient with people. You know, don't get frustrated with people just because they don't do the amount of soul winning that you guys do. Um, or if they're not going soul winning at all. You know, we want to keep encouraged encouraging people that aren't going soul winning yet to get involved. Um, you know, it takes time. You know, we didn't get to where we were overnight. And even uh, Jesus here, he, when he's telling the parable, he realizes that this, this um, <clears throat> person that comes seeking fruit on this fig tree is being patient. I mean, he's coming year after year for three years. And even after three years, when he says, I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and he says, you know, cut it down, he still allows the dresser to give it one more chance. He says, hey, you know, let me, let me just dung it and dig about it and just see one more time if it'll bear fruit. And that's what I want to do this morning. You know, I just want to heap some dung on, <laughs> on, your, on your fig tree, you know, get some, get some fruit growing on there. You know, and you know the thing with dung, right, is, is it's good for plants, isn't it? It's good for plants because it provides nutrients and it helps the fruit to grow, but it's not always pleasant. To receive, is it? You know, you're shoveling the dung and putting the dung. You know, I remember we put chicken poo on the lawn, and this 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 why this time I bought like the, the non chicken poo fertilizer, because like for a week or two, like you know, the place was just smelling like poo. Um, but it did good for the grass. That's why in the grass you can see some some uh, stronger patches now, because we put that dung on on the lawn, uh, we let it alone, uh, so that it would bear some more. Or in this case, more. Uh, grass, uh, what are they called? What are grass leaves called? What's the word I'm looking for? Anyways. So my point is, you know, we, we ought to be patient with one another, you know, and it's not about just being hard on people that aren't soul winning yet, right, guys? It's about encouraging everyone to provoke unto love and good works. It's about getting us all going in the right direction, going where we need to go. And, and the way I think of it in church, you know, even though people that aren't involved in the work or aren't as involved as some of us are, even though they, yes, you know, we can say they're a drain on the spiritual resources of this church. But, you know, we that are, you know, further along in our spiritual life ought to bear that spiritual drain. You know, don't think, don't, don't look down on your brother in Christ and just say, you know, why are you always taking and always taking and always taking? Because we all take, right? And we all take sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we come to church and we need to take more than we give. You know, and other times, you know, it's like in the Bible where it talks about, you know, the money. There are, there are times when I have more money, I can help somebody else. And there are other times when that person has more money and I will need help. There's a time to give and there's a time to receive. There's, it works the same in churches. There's a time to give and there's a time to receive. So don't get upset at people just because they're always taking because, you know, we ought to, um, maybe it's a time where we ought to give. And the other way I think of it as well, it's like uh, children in church. You know, like, uh, you know, we want children in church. We don't want everyone to be here. So I don't want to necessarily get 
people out of church, you know, be hard on them and get, get them out of church where now they're no longer under the, the word of God. They're no longer under the preaching. They're no longer under the encouragement. I want them at least to stay. So it's not about, you know, if you're not going soul winning, then get out of here. I don't want you to be here. No, I want you to be here because for chances are if you get out of here, you'll never go soul winning. You know, now if you're anti soul winning, then I don't want you here because that, that if you're against the soul winning program, then it's, this is not the church to be in. But if you are for the soul winning program, you're just not into it yet. You know, I want you to be here because I want you to be under the preaching. I want you to be encouraged by it. And even though, uh, you know, like I was saying, you know, you'll, you'll be a spiritual drain, I guess, to the other people. You know, I think those of us who are going soul winning, uh, we ought to think of them like the children in the church. You know, we have the children here, you know, do they maybe take away from, um, you know, how quiet it is or how easy it is to, 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 um, to concentrate? But we suffer them, don't we? You know, we who are more spiritual, we say, hey, you know what? Yeah, people do take more than they give to this church. But for those of us who are in this church, we just need to think of it the right way and carry them and um, help them to grow in the Lord. Okay, so... There's no neutral ground. So just think about how your testimony is affecting other people. 